I-26F, am not from USA so I might have some grammatical errors. So, my dad left my mom and I when I was only 5 years old. I also have a brother 21M. He left the country with his mistress and never tried to contact. We were really poor. My mom had to do some immoral stuff to get food on the table. She was a stripper and also sometimes pleased men to get money for us. She put me and my brother through school. I understood why my mom did what she did because we had no money and she wanted us to have a life better than ours. And I am not ashamed because of it. I also started working part-time when I was 14. I was a good student so I got a scholarship to a good university. My mom eventually stopped stripping when my brother got a part-time job too. She now only works as a waitress. I met my fiancé Javi 27M in college. This was my first serious relationship. We both loved each other. I never told Javi about my mom's past because my mom made me promise to never say that to anyone. I kept that but it felt so wrong to keep this huge information away from my fiancé. Javi knew about us. He only knew that my family was extremely poor. He doesn't care about that. He is a very sweet guy who always takes care of me. He even covered some of the cost of my brother's education as well even though I told him not to. My mom also likes him. That's why she told me not to tell Javi anything about her past or what she did for a living. So, a week ago, my mom and I went to Javi's house to meet his parents. I didn't realize his uncle and aunt would also be there. Upon seeing his uncle my mom's face went white as if she saw a ghost. His uncle also kept staring my mom as if he knows her. My mom felt uncomfortable and said that she wants to go home. Javi was confused by it. But nonetheless we left earlier than we anticipated. The next day my fiancé came to our place and shouted at me that I lied to him. He said that I am a gold digger just like my mother and my mother is the reason why his uncle's first marriage broke. I asked him to explain what the hell is he talking about. He said that his uncle knew my mom because he was a regular customer of her and often hired her for her services. His wife caught them red-handed and immediately filed for divorce. My mom was crying and said that she didn't know he was married. She never asks men about their marital status. I told him that he has no right to speak to my mom like that and his uncle was fully to blame because he was a married man who was hiring escorts for himself. My mom has no obligation towards his marriage. Javi still blamed me and mom and said that he felt deceived. He said to my face that he doesn't want to date a whore's daughter because I will probably invite men just like my mom. My mom had to beg him to not break the engagement. I am tired. If I do end up marrying him. Him, my mom would always have to suffer because of it. I don't want that, so I gave him back his engagement ring and told him to never show his face. My mom is angry because she thinks this is my only chance to get married because no other guy would marry into a family where the mom works as a s worker. But I think I did the right thing because I am not ashamed of my mom. I didn't even want it to hide it in the first place. I wanted to tell him the truth but my mom refused it. So. AITA, edit 1. I need to clear things out a bit. Javi knows everything about my life. He knows my dad fled the country and we had to live in poverty because of it. He knows my mom got pregnant way too young. I did give him hints that my mom had to do shady things to get by. He probably thought my mom stole things. But I didn't disclose that she was a s worker. I wanted to tell him but my mom said not to because she doesn't want this to escalate. Also I never asked Javi to pay for my brother's education. He did it from the goodwill of his heart. I did promise to pay him back. I am not after his money. I do love him a lot. Even though we are broken up now, I still miss him. We have been together for six years. It is not easy to throw away those six years just like that. Edic 2. Hi everyone. I wanted to say thank you so much for your support. I never thought I would get so much support from strangers than people from my own community. I was however expecting a lot of hate towards my mom considering her profession but it is less than what I expected. I don't know if this qualifies as a proper update but there have been few changes. After I broke the engagement. I have been getting calls from my friends and Javi's family that I am making a huge mistake. My close friends know that my mom used to be a s worker but mutual friends of mine and Javi does not know about it. So, they are also questioning me if I ever did that. Javi did apologize. He said he got carried away by his emotions and he loves me. And GL, I love him too.
I wanted to get past all of this. I know people have told me that I should not get married to this guy. But I was weak for a moment until he told me that he is willing to let things go and start anew if my mom does not attend any wedding functions. I was shocked. Weddings are a big deal in our culture. There are many functions and parties surrounding the wedding. How can he ask that I do not involve my mom? He told me that because of my mom's past it would be difficult for his family members to be around her. He convinced his mom with different difficulty about this engagement. Also since his uncle is going to be there, it will only remind him of bad things. At that moment I realized that I was never a consideration. It was always him and making his family happy. My family is beneath them because we are not from a respectable background and come from homes of workers. I stood firm and told him no, it is not going to happen. I will not give in to their demands because the way I see it my mom did not do anything wrong. It is funny how quickly people will judge a woman based on her work that she had to do to feed her kids but no one will come forward to help her in time of her need. Javi threatened that I am making a huge mistake by letting him go. I just left. I do not have the energy to deal with it. I think this news is spreading like wildfire now. I may have to move out of the city because if this news reaches to my workplace I know damn well people will ostracize me. So, I might look for a job in a different area. Lastly. I messaged him saying I am sorry for not telling him earlier about my mom but I loved him a lot. I am sad that he chose this topic to ruin a 6 year old relationship. I will be going to the bank and pay back the money he paid for my brother's education. I am still crying and jilted to say the least. Also. I saw that my post was shared in different religious groups bashing my mom, saying that I deserved it. Well, let me tell you religious fanatics that most men who claim to be religious are not at all. My mom had many clients who claim to be religious including pastors and preachers. So please before blaming my mom look inside your house and your family. You might find chameleons hiding within your family too. Edict 3. People who are asking why I am paying him back. It is because I don't want him to use it as an excuse to call me a gold digger who used him for his money. I don't want to be in his debt. Update. As I suspected, the news of my mom's old profession did spread like a wildfire. Some of mine and Javi's friends literally cut me off because they don't want to deal with the sex worker's blood. I guess it is for the best because it shows they are not my real friends. My real friends stuck with me. This impacted my brother a lot. I know living here would make things difficult. My brother will be graduating soon. I advised him to look for masters in a foreign country like in USA. Canada or UK. Because of this whole fiasco, I, along with my mom, moved to a new city. I took a transfer from my work. My boss, bless her heart, is the most amazing human being. She literally defended me. She told my co-workers not to bother me about anything other than work. My personal life shouldn't be any of their business. She has been so supportive of me and my family. She never questioned me or judged me. She transferred me to a different city on my request and even managed to find an apartment for me and my mom. She is like Michael Scott but mature. That is the only positive outcome from this. As for my ex. He is seeing another girl his parents set him up with. But he did call the first two months just to get me back. I had moments of weakness because I loved him so much but the vile things he said about me and my family just played like a recorder. I am still trying to heal from everything. I just hope I can get my brother out of this hell hole into a better place. People here are f***ing hypocrites and backdated. Nobody wants to change. Even people my age are so conservative. There has also been another bomb that dropped on us. That is my POS sperm donor found me on Facebook and messaged me to meet. I don't know what the hell does he think that I am going to forget those 20 years we struggled because he was a coward selfish snake. Thanks for listening. OP and her mom are class acts. And as much as it hurt, I glad she got away from that sniveling weak man. She would have never had a full life married to that judgy coward. I hope all the good things for her and her family. That was the first story and now we are going to listen today's second story. My wife and I have been together 10 years. Married for nearly five and we have a three-year-old son. We are fairly happy though have been having couples counseling for six months as we found being parents very difficult. We've been making a lot of progress with our communication lately but today that all fell apart. My wife has autistic traits which run in both our families. 
and I have ADHD so we are a neurodivergent couple. That's probably relevant here. My wife recently moved back into our shared office as we both work from home. Today she hopped on video call with a guy from work who she is friends with and I stepped out to take a quick call about something. After my call was finished I just sat scrolling Reddit for a bit but could hear their conversation and it increasingly made me uncomfortable. My wife sounded like a completely different person. She would tut and giggle before she said anything. She was constantly joking with him every sentence. She was energetic and it all just sounded so incredibly flirty. He had called her not for anything work related but to tell her he had taken a new job in the city closest to us. He currently lives far away. She said things like do me a favor, when that job contract comes, just rip it up so you don't have to leave. And as long as you are always available for me on Microsoft Teams, and they then went on to confirm they had each other on WhatsApp etc. All the while joking about various things and then giggling in a way that I never hear her do, ever. They were talking for 20 minutes and I almost started to record them so she could hear herself back, but they said goodbye just after I started. It just made me feel so gross listening to it. This isn't the first time I've noticed their flirtiness and I brought it up last year after she started that new job. They were calling each other outside work hours and she added him on the PlayStation. And they would sit and game together in the evenings chatting away with the same giggly flirty tone. She was talking about him and lot and telling me lots of really personal things about his childhood and parents and stuff. It caused issues when I brought up that it made me feel uncomfortable. Especially one night night when we were supposed to have time together but she just forgot and spent the night playing with him. She denies flirting at all and just says he's a work friend. Around that time she traveled to the central office and I know he had invited her for dinner at his place which hadn't happened in the end I think because I said I wasn't comfortable with that. They did end up still going for dinner in the city together though, as friends. The thing is, I'm not a jealous person. Over the years my wife has had a few crushes. One of them being my uni roommate who's like a younger brother to me. It's kind of a running joke that they both fancy each other a bit and I genuinely don't mind and think it's funny. We joke about one day having threesome with him etc. I do know that she is prone to the occasional crush and I don't take it seriously, but have once or twice over the decade have felt like I have had to point out some boundaries. So back to today. After they finished their call I said hey can I talk to you a minute. When I then said that she probably wouldn't like what I was about to say, she immediately got defensive and walked off and said she wasn't going to have this conversation. Since I hadn't even said anything yet that intuitively tells me that some part of her knows that the way she was talking was probably a bit inappropriate. I got upset and said I was feeling uncomfortable with the way she was talking with him again. That it sounds like heavy flirting to me. That I would feel uncomfortable if I talked to another woman at work like that. Or if a girl talked to me like that, even as a clueless guy. I would be getting a strong vibe that she fancies me, that I feel hurt by it and that if she talked like that to me it would be a dream come true. She basically dismissed it all very defensively and said she wasn't flirting at all, that I just didn't want her to be friends with him, that she doesn't understand what she's done wrong and that she's fed up with me being like this, even though I haven't spoken to her about this since last summer and never been jealous in our 10 year relationship. I felt like I'm being gaslit as it seems like such obvious flirting and she's just dismissing it is all in my head. It caused a massive argument. I'm willing to admit that me getting upset about it is likely some insecurity, but at the same time, I feel like I know what I saw heard and that I'm an understanding person. I'm okay with crushing but this just crosses a line. I should be able to say that. No, I think it's likely something to do with my wife's autistic traits and not understanding the social norms or boundaries. I don't know. She doesn't realize how flirty she's being sometimes. I think that's definitely true. I wish she would flirt with me by accident a bit more. Is it okay for me to feel upset by this? Or am I being controlling or irrational? Update. Hi I originally wrote this post earlier in the year. It's well overdue a positive update. I've had a few people asking so here we go. I ended up showing my wife the post I had written and it was so incredibly validating to feel like I wasn't going insane. We had a really difficult conversation about it all and we were both so angry at each other until she told me the truth. In a rather heated moment she kind of venomously said something like, I like talking to him because when I do I feel happy and relaxed. Like 
like I can be myself, which is something I can never feel when I'm around you. This really made me sad and I instantly wasn't angry anymore. I just apologized and told her how that's just what I wanted her to feel around me again. That feeling of being herself is something she had lost after becoming a mum and the difficult few years we've had in COVID etc. We don't have and never have had any help being parents from our extended families and so never have time together for ourselves. She didn't have any feelings for him beyond friend and I do think she was genuinely being naive and also a little willingly ignorant about him pushing boundaries. A few examples which came out after we talked about it, he had asked to come back to her hotel room to continue chatting after the work party, for example. This was also due to her autism as well and not fully understanding where the boundary is. But when we looked at the big picture she could see and did admit that she had unwittingly begun down the path of some kind of emotionally affair, which she didn't really know was a thing. She took responsibility for this and did stop talking to the guy and told him that she would only be talking to him if required to for work purposes from then on. He left that job very shortly after so that was also easier for us. Funnily enough, it did come out after he left that he had made some advances and been awkward with a few other of my wife's colleagues. People noticed at work that my wife had stopped being friendly with him and was asked was it because he was being awkward with you as well kind of thing. We talked a lot in counseling about it. I think a massive problem that I had to acknowledge was that she had got to a place where she expected me to be angry and irritated by things because that is definitely something I have struggled with. So she had begun hiding stuff and fear of how I would respond. She didn't feel like she could talk to me about stuff. When she did admit to her wrongdoing and acknowledge she had began to push me away and prioritize things above our relationship, she was surprised at how kind and patient and forgiving I was. I was surprised too. We kinda figured out that a lot of the anger and irritation was often because I could tell that I wasn't getting the whole truth. That's all I wanted her to be straight with me so I know where I stand, that, and my feelings to be acknowledged, both of which are a massive trigger for me. We started doing things like having a take back of the day where if one of us said or did something we later regretted, then we could apologize and call it our take back. And we both agreed that we would forgive and forget those with no exceptions. We found that worked amazingly to develop compassion and understanding for one another. We also began working on having date nights every Friday, and having difficult conversations with 100% honesty while sat together, looking at each other, and holding hands, so that we were connecting and feeling listened to. This was prescribed by our therapist because she told us about how when we both get triggered we have a tendency to disassociate and we don't look at each other and turn away from each other and get stuck in a place where we can't hear what the other is saying. It was really tricky at times, but we've gotten pretty good at it now, and whenever we start struggling we are very conscious to make physical contact and look at each other so we can hear and be heard. We took a break from counseling over the summer holidays because we decided we needed so time to process and we ended up having an amazing summer. We went back for a therapy session last week which we thought was about starting a second round. We were a bit nervous because we've been so happy and didn't want to stir anything up. But the therapist could see how happy and good things had been so she told us not to come back unless we want to in the future. And it's true. We have been the happiest we have ever been. We are really close again. Our communication is so much better. Our understanding and compassion for each other and our quirks, triggers etc. is at an all-time high. We look out for when the other is struggling and step in where we can. When we miss it and the other has a meltdown or says does something unkind, we are much better able to forgive and forget it using our takebacks and just having more understanding and compassion for each other's strengths and weaknesses. I think it's fair to say that although some boundaries were being crossed, my wife was only at the very beginning of the path that leads to full-blown emotional affair. Nothing had really happened and there were no feelings my wife had beyond exciting friendship with someone who was giving me nice attention though he definitely had ulterior motives. So we were lucky to catch it when we did. That being said, the root cause was definitely our bad communication, negative behavioral loops that we had gotten into and the degradation of our romantic relationship from becoming new parents over the last four years. There was a lot to learn and a lot of effort and willingness required on our parts to fix the issue and move forward. 
but only in short intense convo bursts outside of which we have been very happy because we feel in control of it. Hopefully some of you can read this and learn a few things to help your relationships. If I had to recommend one thing it would be the take back of the day. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Cheers to everyone who was supportive on the first post. Impressive maturity from OLP and wife cause we all can slide down a wrong path a bit sometimes but willingly readjusting oneself and strengthening the relationship instead of doubling down until something big bad happens is nice to read about. Kudos to them. I'm more impressed and shocked at the therapist who said not to come back cause they were so happy. I don't think I've ever heard of such a thing happening. That sounds like a well-adjusted therapist which is also a bit rare. Thanks for listening everyone if you enjoyed today's story. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Red Relationships to never miss a future upload.